What's up everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about deep linking within your Power Apps. I'll explain what deep linking is, why you might wanna use it, and how to make it work within your Power Apps all in this video. But first, here's the intro. Before we get started with how to implement this, let's start with the what and the why. What is deep linking? When you take a look at the screen here, say you are on your mobile phone, for example, and you click on a link, but instead of going to your generic home page of your app, you want to go to some specific page. That's what deep linking can enable you to do. So without deep linking, you launch something or click on a URL from your mobile device and it takes you straight to the app welcome screen. You have to click in to find the screen that you're looking for. Deep linking bypasses all of that and takes you to a specified screen within your app. This can apply for mobile apps or desktop apps, whichever. So let's take this Power App that I have for example. Now if you're new with Power Apps, as far as what your default screen is, it's whichever screen that you have first in your list of screens. So here I have about five different screens, but the very first one is this welcome screen that I'm using to show what deep linking is. So since this is the first screen, this will be the welcome screen, meaning anytime anyone opens this app, this will be the screen that they see. But within this same app, I have different screens, one where people can enter in contact information. So either enter in new contacts or edit existing. And I also have a task entry form. So what if instead of taking the user to the home page, where they have to click on the buttons to get to the new task form or the new contact form, what if I wanted to take them directly to this contact form, for example? That's what we can do with deep linking. This deep linking in Power Apps is made possible with the param function. What the param function enables you to do is it will read any parameter that you pass in via your URL. Now first, let's take a step back and find how do we find the URL for our Power App. Well, if you go to your make.powerapps.com page and click on your list of apps, and then find the app that you want to get the URL for, click these three dots and go to details. This web link here is the URL for your Power App. Now what we can do here is put in some additional parameters at the end of this URL to define where we want this app to deep link to. So if we copy this here and put that in the browser, now something new that they recently added to all of your Power Apps URLs is this tenant ID. So there's already a parameter in here. Now all a parameter is, is a way to pass in information to um, the URL that you're going to. A parameter is defined at the end of your URL and your first parameter is defined with a question mark. So for example, if you're going to Microsoft.com and wanted to pass in a parameter, you can just after the .com put in a question mark and then you'll put in the name of your parameters. If we look at this here, there's already a tenant ID parameter being specified and a big long GUID after that. So to do our deep linking and have our custom parameters here, we need to go to the end of this and we will put in an ampersand sign and now we can define our own parameter. So first we need to give it a name. So since this video is all about deep linking, I'm going to call my actual parameter deep link. That's the name of the parameter that we'll need to search for in Power Apps, so now we need to pass it in a value. But we do that with the equals sign. If I was wanting to route the user to the contact form, I might say deep link equals contact. So now that I have this in my URL, I can copy that, put that anywhere. So maybe I want to be able to open this up from a SharePoint page or embed it in an email for somebody. I would just copy this URL with our new parameter added here, this ampersand deep link equals contact and we can do some stuff in the power app side that will look for this check if it's what that value is in here if it's contact move us to the contact page all right now let's jump over to power apps and see how we can get that value and do something with it 
So we'll want to do this on the start of our application. So whenever the Power App is launched, we need to check and see if that parameter value is there, see what it is, and based on what it is, move it to the appropriate screen. We define our actions that happen on start in this app section here. And you'll see in the drop down, one of the options is on start. Now I already have a formula in here. So this is doing everything that I need for the date blinking. So first we just have an if statement. And then in here, that's where I'm using that param function. So you just type in param, open parenthesis, and you just give it the name of the parameter that you're looking for in the URL. So we put in deep link as our parameter name. So it's going to look in the URL when the app is started and see if it contains this deep link option. Then we're saying, okay, if that parameter is there and if that parameter value equals contact, then we want to move to the contact form screen in our app. To move to a different screen in your app, that's done with the navigate function. So you just type in navigate and then you pass it in the name of the screen you want to navigate to. So if we look on the left hand side here, I have a screen called contact form and that's when I want to navigate the user to if we have that parameter value in here. Now next I have an else. So if that deep link is equal to task, then I want to navigate to the task form. Now, if no parameter is defined in this case, then it will just behave as normal and open up on this initial welcome screen, which is fine is exactly what we want. That's really all that's needed from the Power App side to be able to do this deep linking. So the last thing that you have to do is take in your deep link URL with your parameter and put that wherever you want to launch the app. Again, maybe you have a SharePoint site and you want to have a button to say, add new contact. Here on SharePoint, I just have a button and I'm going to paste in our deep link Power App URL. Make sure you have that ampersand deep link equals. Now, if I click this button, it's going to launch the Power App, that on start function is going to load, it's checking and look, it navigates us directly to that contact form entry screen. This deep linking capability can really come in handy when you're using Power Apps with SharePoint. Now, I don't particularly like building Power Apps by clicking the Customize Forms option in SharePoint. I always build them as standalone apps. So kind of like how I did here on this demo app. I just went into the make.powerapps.com, said new app, and then pointed it to my SharePoint data source that way. When you do that, though, you don't really have a way natively in SharePoint to get specifically to that app, right? So you could still, if you're interacting with this task list, for example, it's going to look like native SharePoint. If I wanted to be able to click on a task and have it go directly into the app, I could use the deep linking stuff that we're looking at now in combination with SharePoint column formatting. So with SharePoint column formatting, I can click on the title field, for example, go to the settings and say format this column. I can paste in a little bit of JSON here, and this will actually make this column open up my Power App. So all this is really doing is I can put in the URL of my Power App here. So again, we will take that URL and we'll put in our parameter with our deep link. So again, we'll say deep link equals, in this case, we want to go to the task screen. and if I want this to open up for this particular record, I'm actually doing two parameters. So in any given URL, you can have multiple parameters. So in this case, we have three. We have our tenant ID, we have deep link, and now we're gonna have an ID parameter. So I can add some additional logic in my app on start and check if that parameter for task is there, and then also check to see if an ID is being passed in. If an ID is being passed in, then in my task form, set that form control to point to that ID so it returns all of the data. So let's get this set up first, all right? We want this to open up our Power App. So we'll just save this here and it'll apply our formatting. Now all we need to do is go back to our Power App real quick. So if I go back to my task form screen and in the properties here, go to the invisible. So on our app on start, we already have that check to see if 
what parameters being passed in to tell me if I should go to the task screen or the contact screen. Once it does hit this task screen, I want to do that additional check and see if I'm also passing in an ID. Because if I am, that means that this form mode should be edit and I need to pass in the ID so it knows which item to pull and fill out in this form. On the invisible, I can do that same kind of if statement with the param, but instead of the deep link, we'll do ID because that was the name of the parameter we were passing in in our column formatting. So we're gonna say if that's not blank, then what I wanna do is first set the mode of my form control to edit and not new. So to do that, we'll just say edit form and then we'll pass in our form here and that will actually change the mode of the form. So on visible, that will change the mode and if it is blank, then keep it as the new form. So now I'm gonna copy this because we need to use it in one more spot. Now we're changing our form. So now I need to tell it if it is an edit form, which item to pull. So that's stored in the form control itself and its items property that we have selected here. Here we can say if that parameter is not blank, then we need to look up into our task list and find the record which ID matches the ID from the parameter that we're passing in. The parameter values are being passed in as a string and the ID of a SharePoint list item is an integer. So we need to wrap this param inside a value function so that it will format it as an integer and the data types will match. If you don't have it wrapped in a value, you'll get a blue squiggly here and it will give you an error that the types don't match. So make sure that you do wrap this in a value. All right, let's save this and let's test our SharePoint column formatting deep linking here. So here we are back on our SharePoint list. Now we've applied that column formatting on this title field and we've set it with our parameters there. We're passing in the deep link of task and the ID for the selected item. So if I click here onto this task, for example, of presentation for Ignite, notice how it's opening up a new window and this is opening up my YouTube demo app and power apps. So it took us right to the task screen thanks to our deep link and it passed in the ID and pulled in all of the task details for this specific task. So just another use case for this deep linking capability. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.